Back in early May of 2023, my family and I decided to attend the Sergeant Sons Demolition Derby at the Meadow Event Park, which is just east of King's Dominion. Unfortunately, it wasn't exactly as advertised. It actually had a couple controversies, and after editing the 50-minute video, I determined it'd be way too boring for your viewing pleasure. However, an event a couple months later would be way different than that. A buddy of mine asked me if I wanted to go to the Night of Fire event at Virginia Motorsports Park on July 2nd, 2023. Uh, okay, let me check my schedule. Okay, I'm open. I wasn't sure what to expect, and I've never been to Virginia Motorsports Park before, so this would be something new for me. So here we go, on a brand new racing adventure. For some reason, my bud previously had the idea that this event was at Dominion Raceway, which is closer to both of us than Virginia Motorsports Park. Even after the discovery of where this event exactly was, we both still decided to go. My bud asked me if coolers could be brought, so I looked up the info regarding the event. That is when I found out this was actually a drag racing event. Cool! I've actually never been to a drag racing event before, so this would be a very unique experience. While looking up the what to knows the day before the event, I found out a very familiar name was going to be there. Although I'm way more known for my NASCAR favorites, and if you know about one or even all of the IndyCar trio, I actually have quite a few favorites in drag racing. And I mean, quite a few. And one of them is Larry Dixon. So it would be very interesting if I did get to meet him. I just hope that if I do meet Larry, I don't get starstruck. So after a couple hours of traveling, my bud and I get there. We walked around quite a bit. And sure enough, the first thing I saw was... Racing event at the Virginia Motorsports Park. And I know what my first stop is. That's Scott Palmer over here. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, that's cool. Morning today. I see thanks Rick on there. I wonder if that's for the uh, NHRA starter of many years. I'll get back to this area later. I know that Larry's probably busy. Scott Palmer's here, I didn't know that. This is my first time at a drag racing event of any sort. Uh, Mike Hepp. Hmm. I did not know that. Hmm. I'll get back to that area later. Woke up and I'll go back to uh, that area later on. Check out the rest of this first. See exactly what we got. Oh, there's merch here. Probably have to pay for it though. Not sure who this is. Hartman Smith. They all sell their own shirts. I'd assume so. Oh. He 
PDRA, that's what that is. Professional Drag Racing Association. Melody Salney. Derek Worrell, whatever that is. You want to go down through all this? Well, that's up to you. Did you I want to? I want to go see him race. Okay. I don't give a shit about it. Oh, Ricky Smith's here. That's cool. All these are just drivers. I don't give a shit about any of that. <laughs> I don't want to meet them. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a shit about any of that. I don't have any favorites, so it ain't like I want to buy one of their shirts. Like, you might want one of those dicks. <laughs> Well, there's only a few of these drivers that I know to begin with. Huh? There's, hi. Yeah, the, yeah, there's only a few of these drivers that I know. I know who Ricky Smith is. I know who Larry Dixon is. Backing up. <laughs> hey, he thought that car was backing up. I was like, what the? <laughs> I thought that car was backing up. I swear to God. I was like, whoa. Junior dragsters, I believe. That's cool. Oh, watch out. I have to say, if the NASCAR Weekly Podcast was here, that's something I didn't know. House of Color. So any rule or Valerie Logan? Scotty was talking about small tires, small black and Mustang. He wants into the racing stuff, so I'll check out the rest of this later, I guess. <laughs> what? <laughs> A jet dragster. <laughs> All right. The 92 Mustang out of Fredericksburg, Virginia, Dow's in out of 633. Yeah. I did want to say hi, but I knew Larry was busy, so I figured I'd see him later. I wanted to see the rest of the pit area, but my buddy wanted to see some racing action on the track. So here is some of that racing action. All right, let's see how this is going to work. Richmond, that's not too far from here. A little ways from us. So I'm behind me, playing 96.5. That's good as long as Sweet Home Alabama doesn't play. Alright, let's see what we got. Ah, felt something in my 
arm there. All right, so Fox with Rowe. It is a process. Don't All right, let's ball. see. Ben out of Iser's side. Yep. The dial. Robert Fox is moving on right here today in the Super 64. The Super 64? Wow. Oh, I like that baby. Yeah. The Chevy 200 dials well dials in at 564. And Richie Allen out of Kilmarnock, Virginia, the 23 race step right side of the race track. This should be interesting. <laughs> so this is basically bracket racing, which isn't my type of drag racing, but for some it works. Here we go. Uh, oh, red light. Richie Allen is going to be moving on. Brandon Lloyd was 118 red. Richie was 50. He goes 449 out of 428. That was a, uh, an interesting pair right there. Wait a minute. The guy in the light lane? Look green. Hmm. Another dude red light. Yeah. That's what I thought it said, but then they said the other guy red lighted too, but hmm. Randy Rubich all the riding right inside the drags around Stalk, Virginia. Booty Harris. The show me too. Alright, we'll do one more run on that anticlimactic ending. <laughs> Lies in these runs. <laughs> uh. 
Okay, one more time. Jay Tilly. Tilly's Camaro, the Vidin Witty, 578 to the 455. Alan there left side. No red light this time. What the? And somehow that was even worse. American what happened to his starting car? line? And it's going to be some side 462 off the 55. This will be on hold for just a moment. We'll push back. And we will finish out this round of our Super 64 before Alaska Holloway takes the stage at 2.30 this afternoon. Okay then. After this Super 64 round completed, we went back through the pit area and concessions. I take this off. Here's your racing tire. That's interesting. When light vest. No. Racing, huh? Oh wow! <laughs> like I've got that's kind of funny. Oh, I see what it is now. Is so it can get to the tree the fastest? Yeah. Right. Clearance t-shirts, whatever that means. Go back this way. Through there and see the rest of them. Sure. Right. So, there might be like the second round of practice. Well, they said Super 64, so I think it'd be more like the first round. That was. Yeah. So they'll they'll re bracket them and uh, they, they ain't gonna race them right back to back. It'll be a whole nother. Oh uh, yeah. Section. Quite a few different divisions here and stuff. Oh, uh, not up here, huh? Yeah, quite a few. Uh, what's that, eight hours of racing? Except from Usually, two, yeah. Except from two, from two to ten. So that's eight hours of racing. Yeah. With this being my first time at Virginia Motorsports Park, I was not aware of this. I just smiled and had to take a picture. KHR, hmm. Oh. 
<laughs> Look at over here. Martino. I wonder. Well, Tom Martino is connected to it. Got a nice looking truck over there. Somebody's scooter. Ooh, that's a nice car over there. This is all the ones that say just right. A good chunk of them, yeah. Yeah. A lot of them. Oh, yeah. They got one of these motherfuckers and when they go down the track they look slow. Eh. Compared, to, compared to the other cars? Yeah. Like compared to the dragsters? Mm-hmm. Dude, don't go that way, please. I'm gonna go this way. So John Danerix, who's 6 11 off the 613, gets that by run into the next round of our Super 64 category. Here today, so that will include racing activities for uh, a little bit. Alaska Holloway will go live on our concert stage here in just about six minutes. In the ring ring concert, and we'll roll back into a 16, a Super 64 shootout at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, all right. Uh, the Super 64 round concluded. They're going to resume racing at 3 o'clock. Now, some person's going to sing later on. They're going, what? The Super 64 round just right. concluded. So now they're going to have some other person perform until 3 o'clock, then resume racing. That is a pretty color. I like that. This one. Yeah, that's a junior drag star, I believe. Like that. Yeah. It does. There you go. Wonder how fast it is. It's two cycle, two stroke. It looks like. That's a good question. We're gonna find out. Nice and windy. Why it's Stanley? Right there. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Made my eyes drop in a kind of out of my nose. Oh, that's never happened before. <laughs> oh. Hmm. <laughs> I've never had that happen before. I need to figure out what time. <laughs> Oh. oh, that got my attention. There you go. Okay. Here's that team. Ah. Oh, wait a minute. The way these uh, cars trying to get by. Oh, oh that got my attention. <laughs> so one of the top fuel teams was doing a warm-up and I got a bit overwhelmed after doing a bit more walking during a performance by Alaska Holloway who I did not know I stopped by Larry Dixon's pit again he was taking care of final preparations before his run so I took a couple pictures thinking this would probably be the closest I'd get it was announced that after Alaska Holiday's concert there, there would be an autograph session at the stage with a good amount of the drivers at the event. Larry was still at his pit area when this started. I didn't bring anything with me, so I had the idea to get a t-shirt and have Larry autograph that if I did get to meet him. I ended up getting a PDRA shirt as I did not find any merch in religion to Virginia Motorsports Park itself. As I was paying for the shirt, a lady appears next to me, apparently representing Larry. It was kind of loud because of the, some of the Super 64 cars running at the track at this point. But I believe the story was Larry was not made aware that there would be an autograph session for this event. And he would like something to autograph for the fans. The cashier guy gave her some PDRA stickers as I finished up purchasing the t-shirt. So about 10 minutes before the end of the session, I made my way to where the autograph session was. I didn't see Larry there when I first got there, but I figured I would meet some of the drivers and get their autographs before trying again at Larry's pit area, which wasn't too far from the stage. So I did record how that went, and this had a surprise ending. Not too bad. Thank you. Hello. Hello. How are you? Not too bad. Good. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. No problem. Mommy and Daddy were Thanksgiving over there with the adults. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hello. How are you? Not too bad. There you go. Thank you. All right, let me get all this straight for a second. Thank you. Vienna. All right, come on, everyone. Fuck you guys. <laughs> this is what I get for carrying too much stuff. Hello. Thank you. Not too bad. Oops. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. How are you doing? Thank you. Hello, how are you? Not too bad. There you go. I don't know why you look like Eric and Andrews for a second, but you really did. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Not too bad. Thank you. Yes, What's your name? Mary. Mary. You Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you don't get to play with that? I've never had it. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Look, I'll see you in a while, but Thank you. Hi. How are you? Not too bad. Do you mind if I get a picture?
Okay, so. <laughs> As if he used the instant transmission ability from the Dragon Ball franchise, Larry Dixon appeared out of nowhere immediately to my left after I got the last bunch of autographs from the session. Hey, I've seen Larry Dixon do a bunch of incredible things. Win a top fuel final with the car on fire, survive multiple crazy wrecks, win multiple top fuel championships against the best of the best, take on the NHRA after the NHRA tried to be stupid, and win, and even take on the ultimate enemy, and win. So, honestly, Larry being able to use instant transmission would not have surprised me. <laughs> I will admit, I did get surprised for a couple seconds, but I laughed it off and properly met Larry Dixon. I got his autograph on a PDRA sticker, which he gave to me. I then asked if I could take a picture of us together, to which he said yes. Why my camera cut off as I asked him that, I don't know. But I did get the picture. After taking the picture, I thanked him for that, and we both went on our way. But not before I picked up my sunglasses at the autograph table, which I almost forgot. <laughs> but, on the bright side, I actually did not get starstruck, despite the surprise. As you heard, Larry asked me how I was, and I was able to answer, not too bad, which is my usual answer to that question, just fine. So... With it being a very long day, and my phone battery being a bit older, I knew I wasn't going to be able to record all the action that I wanted to. But, I did get a lot of action for you to enjoy, including the two races I wanted to see. I can't believe how many people just sitting here watching the track prep. <laughs> the director of the PDRA series and the uh, general manager here at Virginia Motor Sports Park put together. And uh, I can only imagine Tyler, the, the hours that you uh, put into this to uh, have this race format. We have shoved so much racing into a 12 hour period. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time in Virginia this has ever been done to have top fuel, to have jet cars, to have wheel sanders, to have pro lines, you name it, it's going to be going down the racetrack here in front of you tonight. Uh, wheel standards are those cars that start off by doing wheel stands and then slowly come back down before going to the finish line. So a very action-packed evening for everyone to settle in right here in Dinwiddie this evening. Everybody situated, jump in the two rigs. Drivers are waiting patiently. But a very special opportunity because this is the only time that you will see Nitro here at Virginia Motor Sports Park, and it's tonight. <laughs> Some of the very best names and teams coming out to do a two round match race. Ah. First up, we have the Top Fuel Machine. Get the warm for Junior Motorsports Park. Welcome to Mr. Artie Allen. Hey! Coming up next, he is a three-time NHRA <laughs> Top Fuel <laughs> World <laughs> Champion. You have the opportunity to go down the racetrack in a two-seat Top Fuel oh, yeah. Rackster as he comes out underneath the tower. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise. Dixon! Hey! 
Larry Dixon is uh, been back in the driver's seat doing some racing overseas and uh, yep. made the trip all the way from Indianapolis here today. And he's going to bring you the Top Fuel Nitro experience. So next up, coming <laughs> underneath the tower here in just a moment. Is, uh, a car sponsored by the we're gonna PPR. We're going to tell him two by two. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Why not? The first car is called Palmer Racing. It's Mr. Jacob McNeil. Last night you seen this car with Ricky Smith in it. Tonight, Jacob really? McNeil is going to do the driving duties. Hey! We have a brand new sponsor here at DMP this weekend <laughs> for professional bull riding. Give a warm welcome to a crowd favorite, Scott Palmer. Hey! Scott Palmer, quite the showman behind the wheel of these top fuel machines. And uh, he's always known for his, his warm ups back in there in the pit area, a little throttle whack. It's been and a while since very, I heard very that. Oh, wow, there's a lot of people over there. Crew of uh, <laughs> top fuel machines that we will bring out to you later this afternoon. So, going into round number two in top alcohol directs, you're trying to get that much closer to $10,000 for the Eagle hey, Motors team. Hey, we're we're covered the entry, I love that Mr. name. <laughs> That's great. Hey! That's a lot of cars. Hey, it's a really good cool combination of race cars that you will car. see in top nitro. alcohol between the nitro burgers, Never the down supercharged down. entries, and we're going to start to roll out some more as uh, these drivers are down to four. Four remaining with $10,000 on the line. So at 20 years old, how cool is that? Driving a five second, 270 plus mile per hour, nitro burning machine. Please give a warm Virginia welcome to Miss Sarah Allen. Yay! Hey. That's the lady Sarah's I thought was Erica Enders earlier. <laughs> Big smile after she goes down to 13.20. You will see her out later this afternoon. Semi-finals. More people doing prep in the Coming background. underneath the tower, your number one qualifier, the fastest car in top alcohol dragster. That's a blown machine of Mr. Dan Dietrich. Hey! I don't know who Case is, but good well soon. Oh, Linex, hey, that's a Quapple sponsor from the past. So Dan Dietrich, down to one of those racers trying to get that $10,000 big payday here at Top Alcohol Dragster. Tonight, under the lights, they will run their final round. And you'd love a little nostalgia funny car action. We're going to bring you some of that. That's a Generation X car again. Who is race this? number one in the best of a two out of three match race. Oh, boy. Coming up here on the right side of the racetrack. That is the Generation X. Funny car of a crowd favorite. This is Miss Robin Stambaugh. Yeah. Hey! Behind the wheel of that school Chevrolet Vega. And she is looking to whip up on the young lady that's coming out next. She won race number one of their match racing affair. They call the car temporary insanity. Temporary insanity. And there is a level of insanity that you have to have to drive these old school nostalgia machines. Really cool piece. The blown alcohol nostalgia funny car. Please welcome Krista Massarella. Hey! Yeah, we're going to call all 600s now. We're going to call all 750. Yeah, we're going up there. Usually we don't go up there, but me and Ty used to be right here. We're going to catch front row seats, man. She can't see because she's so short. Be careful with the She's like the beach over there right now. So now we bring to you our jet dragsters. Oh, here we go. They are teammates. 
Oh yeah. We run track That's all to together. track to track all over the United States, but I can tell you, when they pull to the starting line, they are going to battle. It is all about the win light. They are out of the Larson Motorsports Camp, driving for Chris and Elaine Larson. Please give a big Virginia Motorsports Park welcome to the Chet Drexers you see here of Josette Roach. That's L A R S E. No relation to that other guy. We've seen a whole lot of cars that will go down the racetrack on uh, four wheels. Now we're going to go down the 1320, a whole quarter mile on the rear, and that is the Hot Rod Fire Truck. A great showman. This is. Why does that name sound familiar? Uh, you couldn't pay me enough to do that. That thing <laughs> is bad. Ain't. I know it's cool, but you still couldn't pay me enough to do that. No, I can't ride in the track looking up at the damn. What the fuck sky. am I looking at? <laughs> <laughs> Hopes and dreams, yeah. thoughts and prayers, wishes and hopes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hope I make it down here. I drive with the cat, but I ain't driving the In the pit area, we need Switzer Dynamics Pro Boost Car, Switzer Dynamics Pro Boost, or I didn't do that backwards, Pro Nitrous. Switzer Dynamics Pro Nitrous and Dynamics Pro Boost. We need you to the staging lanes. Preparing, please. Switzer Dynamics Pro Nitrous Cars, WS Construction Pro Boost. We need you to the staging lanes for your first round pairings, please. Block red light lane we'll wins. Just a second, as we get out, I think replace it coming down to the quarter mile. I got here with the shooter, we'll just get it out of the way momentarily. But yeah, if the shoot did it, that wouldn't be a thing. It would have to be the car that did it. I think it was the parachutes. I think left lane guy is okay. So those codes at eight mile, this going to the thousand foot, and the codes at four mile, they all mean something. And uh, so we're going to go out and reset that, get that back in order. Coming out here supporting the world's quickest and fastest. Eight mile drag racing <laughs> series in the world, and uh, man, what a special, special day it is! And I can't wait to see the winners of the night kick yeah. things off with uh, oh, four, fireworks. Four, 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 racing the eight. Matthew yeah. Knight, yeah. Stay, uh, exhilarating day. Here for John Larson, 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 Larson. Larson. So Ricky Smith, Marcus Butler, gonna come to the starting line. In the classic muscle car matchup, Ford Mustang and Chevrolet Camaro. All right, let's see what Tricky Ricky can do here. Action at first gen 69 bodied 
Entry over there for Marcus Butler. Right late, Steve. You see his teammate, Jay Cox, go down and get the win. Let's see if Butler can shove that thing in around number two, but he's got to take down old Tricky Ricky Smith. Left lane. Oh, here we Ricky go. Tricky, but unfortunately for him, he was not tricky enough. Here on the left side. Top bulb is lit for Dave Hughes. Battle between the Chevrolet Camaros. Right here. What happened there? Race fans, keep your eyes on the racetrack and your hands together because there's Preston Tanner, the strange engineering Corvette. Give a big round of applause for getting through round number one. Hmm. All right, here we go. Powers is in. Let's Dave see how this works. Okay. <laughs> Same age as Ricky Smith, I believe. Look at this, we got a Pontiac over here. In the right hand lane. See a wind line on the zone side? And a car card gladiator X on the left hand lane. I think the, the reaction time is going to play. This should be interesting. Factor here. Ventura knows he's got to get up on the wheel and leave the starting line first. He's down just a little bit of horsepower compared to the width of custom concrete. Pontiac. All right, let's see how this one goes. Um, blew the hood scoop. <laughs> Nitrous explosion. <laughs> but <laughs> everything's fine. The opponent obviously won, but. <laughs> and they also had a staging duel for about 45 seconds. I wonder if that was a factor. But, eh. but it was just the hood scoop, and everybody's fine. So we're good. Got an interesting top occupant uh, extra car in the far lane. And... Nope, other guy got him on a hole shot. Continues his winning way here today. Larry, 389, 181 miles an hour on that 37 dial in. Takes down the top of Oh, I see now. Those are dial ins, like the uh, bracket cars. But, uh, yeah. All right, Tom Martino's in this one. That's a name I haven't heard in years. Let's see how this one goes. I 
Hammond to not get out of bracket, which it worked, but he still lost anyway to the other guy. Okay, we got a 596 versus a 456. This should be an interesting matchup. Let's see what these two very different cars can provide for us. This should be cute. Up here, so sure. everything's all right. The turn off. Our safety crew will grab the push block, push her off the other end, and now it's time for English Town should learn from that. Jack cars, this should be interesting. Little pops along, we're shaking the windows of the building. Let's see how this goes. of the races that I wanted to see. Along with the nitrous backfire popping off a hood scoop, the only thing close to a major incident to happen on track was this run, which I did not record, but someone else had posted. You will go to the final in Pro Boost. Advantage to Tanner, he's got a little run. Oh, hold on, Melody Salemi. Goes across the racetrack and makes contact with the left side. 
containing wall. She gathers it back up, 366-204 for Preston Tanner, but an absolute wild ride for the Buffalo, New York Chevrolet. It wasn't as bad as you may have thought. The left rear of the car only kissed the wall. Otherwise, the car was fine, as was the driver. With my phone battery pretty low, I decided to conserve my phone battery until I saw the top fuel final round matchup between Larry Dixon and another familiar drag racing name, Scott Palmer. And this is what happened. car comes out mid-run. So Larry Dixon should win with his car having no issues whatsoever, right? Well, the wind light actually came on for Scott Palmer. However, the timing and scoring boards that tells you the time and speed did not come on. So something happened. After the run ended, the track officials then checked out Dixon's lane as if something had happened to his car. But us in the stands didn't notice anything. The PDRA posted footage of that run from the angle of the starting line. Look closely at the tree. Something very bonkers happened within that run. Well, originally, the officials thought it was some sort of computer error. So after the top fuel race, they changed up the computer system before proceeding with the event, thinking this would be an easy fix. Okay, fair enough. But then something else happened. Now, bear with me on this one, because this is very complicated to explain. Because of the delay changing out the system, the people on the PA, including the singer named Alaska Holloway from earlier, decided to go on with this hot dog eating contest that was promoted all throughout the day. So basically, five people signed up for this, and how it went was, all five eat one hot dog, run 60 feet to drink a cup of water, and then run back 60 feet. The first one to complete this wins. Of the five competitors, I only remember two of the names, Linda and Cookie. Linda was the crowd favorite, apparently, and you can't forget a name like Cookie. Now, this was on that side road parallel to the track and closer to the staging area behind the starting line. I was closer to the eighth mile mark, so I couldn't really see it. As the entertainers were commentating, they mentioned one of the contestants puking, to which everyone laughed. However... Things got way more complicated. So Cookie ends up winning, and the commentators then focused on Linda, who was struggling. So much so that, and this is from what I understand, she seemingly collapsed. So much so that Alaska Holloway said, we may have to call EMTs. Uh, so... After a few minutes, the AMRCT team appears. 
Now, we didn't know if it was for whichever contestant threw up or if someone had tripped and fell or if it was a medical emergency all of a sudden. After quite a bit of time, an ambulance appears. The track, for the most part, was quiet. As if the top field final wasn't confusing enough, this hot dog eating contest threw everything into disarray. My phone was at 2% battery, so this blurry, blown-up image was all my phone could muster since it's usually not good at taking pictures at night anyway. After some time, someone finally speaks over the PA system. It was Linda who had the medical emergency, but we didn't know what it was. Apparently, it was bad enough that the track had the lady who did the pre-grace invocation do another prayer for Linda. The ambulance left with Linda inside, and she was taken to a nearby hospital. Now, according to one person who was way closer to the situation, what had actually happened was Linda had started choking. The Heimlich maneuver was performed, as was CPR. Uh... However, Linda was in fact awake and alert as she was loaded into the ambulance. So, after all that happened, it was about 10 p.m. when someone named Chase Matthew started his mini-concert next to the pit area as scheduled. People behind us set off fireworks, which was planned for the event. A few minutes later, we got an update regarding the rest of the event. What track officials thought was a computer system error that could quickly be fixed wasn't. It was some sort of major electrical issue starting at the tree, resulting in an electrical fire somewhere within the wiring in the control tower that screwed literally everything up. This was not going to be a quick fix whatsoever, so unfortunately the rest of the event had to be called off for the night. The PDRA later announced that the prize money for all the other finals would be split, but the remaining final rounds themselves would conclude at their next event, which would be in Michigan. Although the events at Virginia Mooresports Park had concluded, there are two updates regarding this event that should be known. And since you're watching this video, you're probably concerned and are curious about Linda. Well, that was the first update. A day after the event, the PDRA heard from Linda and she said, I was looking at the page and it was great to see all the love and support. Feel free to share that I am doing well and headed home to recover. Excellent. A great ending to a bizarre yet scary situation. The second update was regarding the confusion of the top field final between Larry Dixon and Scott Palmer. It turns out my suspicion was right all along. Later on after the event was called, the PDRA reviewed their footage of the top field final and confirmed that Larry Dixon did in fact win that top field final against Scott Palmer. So technically I did get to see one of my drag racing favorites win the final race of the night. Even if that race tried to combine 2004 Columbus with a timing system issue. Which in that instance also ironically involved Larry Dixon as well as another of my top fuel favorites, Daryl Russell. And 2005 Indy with the wrong winner initially being called before being rightfully rectified about a day later. <laughs> so, yeah, Larry Dixon did in fact end up winning what would be the final race of the night. And Linda will be okay. So, despite the sunburn, mini-incident, confusion, scare, and my bud being miffed he couldn't see the Jack Cars race at night, which was one of his main reasons for going, my first live drag racing event was very good. Despite it going very bizarre very quickly towards the end, but either way, I still had a great time. I got to meet a lot of drivers, get a lot of autographs, associate with a lot of people, and I enjoy a lot of good racing. And I got to meet Larry Dixon as well and see him win. And that was super cool for me. And especially since I prepared myself to not get starstruck. <laughs> so now it is time for me to show off the goodies. Okay, so it's been a few days since the trip. But I do want to show off the bag of goodies. Which is this little bag from the event right here. The uh, t-shirt I was talking about, here it is. Uh, basically, it's like a regular uh, PDRA type thing. So this will go with my NHRA t-shirt. So that was pretty cool. 
got a great deal on it. I think I got it for like 15 bucks or something. So that was a cool deal. It's on their little sales rack. And now all the autographs. <laughs> so this is this will be pretty neat. Now not all of these are autographed because some of them I did pick up from a little uh, station of sorts. Now, let's see. There was uh oh yeah. This is uh the uh, Martinos. Uh some of you may remember the name Tom Martino. He was part of the Pro Stock Division years ago. So that was pretty cool. Okay, let's see. Who is this one? Chris Suppers? Yeah. So uh, here is Chris Suppers. And uh, his little dragster there. Yeah, a lot of these names you're probably not going to know. Uh, Pro Junior Dragster. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Who was this one? I didn't... Tilgman, I think the name is. Yeah, he's one of the uh, youngsters. You're not going to get... Um, I try to manipulate the angle of the lighting a little bit, but you're probably not going to get a good angle of the lighting here. But yeah, that's who that one is. Okay, let's see who this one is. This is Carter Jackson? I think that's just a uh, regular card for him. This one, well, actually that one came out a little bit good. So, uh, there's the stuff on him. Oh, he competed in... Oh, the IHRA is still a thing. That's cool. Yeah, I can tell from the uh, back stats here. Honestly, I wasn't sure if the IHRA was still a thing or not. And they also were the ones who gave me this uh, cute little keychain here, so I appreciate that one. Thank you. Now, uh, who is this one? Rowan Parlett. Uh, another one of the uh, top junior dragsters uh, drivers that we saw. One of the little ones. So, yeah, he um, was the Iron Man 6 to 9 year old division winner. <laughs> so, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Get the uh, little ones started out strong. I'll put this over here so they don't slide off the bed. Okay, who was this? Oh, that was his little logo thing. A little sticker here. We're all uh, rolling racing if you. Uh, Want to check that one out. Okay, who was this one? Donald O'Meara III, another top junior dragster. Yeah, a, a lot of these are going to be from a couple different divisions, and top junior dragster was one of them. Basically the stars of the future-like thing. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Mackenzie Hogan. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> they basically put the... Uh, uh, light car, so her autograph would come out better on the car. That is actually pretty clever. I do like that. <laughs> I think that was one of the first drivers that I met at the uh, autograph session during that particular segment. Okay, there's a couple things here. Uh, here is uh, Sarah Allen. The picture is kind of dark, so you're not going to see it on my perspective, but there's her signature right there. So, there's how that came out. It's probably not going to come out well at all, but still good. Uh, here is the uh, Martino's little sticker. That's, this is adorable. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Uh, what was this one? Uh, this is a vintage uh, drag racing tee shirt of the month club type thing. I don't remember who I got this from, but uh, here's the card for that. So that might be something I may have to check out, because I do like designing things. I'll save you for later. Uh, here is a champion sticker uh, signed, signed by somebody whose autograph I don't immediately recognize, but uh, I'll figure that one out. Uh, Ed Burnley. Now, this is the guy who drove that Iron Man car, so you guys recognize this person very well. Because I know quite a few of you is going to know who that is. So, there's that. Okay, now you go over here. This goes over here. There is uh, Jason Ventura. He is the Gladiator X driver. <laughs> so, that was pretty cool. 
it's kind of funny because with the green and black design on the X, I was thinking DX, and there, there was a dragster called Generation X, not Degeneration X, but yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, here's one of the uh, jet dragster uh, drivers. Uh, Zach Costello. This is uh, one of the cars that my uh, buddy that came to the race with me wanted to see, but we didn't get the chance to see him at night, so yeah, that was pretty cool. And the person after that is the other jet car. Uh, Josette Roach, or Josette Roach. I love the... Get back here. I love the way to design this to make it look like she has wings coming out of her. <laughs> that was pretty cool. And if you look at the back of it, it's even more extreme looking. So, mega props for the design team on this one. I, I, I really like this one. I like how that one came out. Okay, here is Mike Hep. Uh, he was the eBay Motors driver right here. So that's pretty cool. Oh, it's got something else going on here. Uh, oh, okay. So the uh, back of info, if you guys can see it, uh, I'll let you guys read that for a couple seconds. So basically he is a part of this uh, little program that he and another person founded over after overcoming some... Uh, I just now realized that Dragster had this thing on the side called Recovered Alky. Okay. It, yeah. I get that. What is that? <laughs> okay, so Temporary Insanity. That was that uh, blue Dragster. The uh, Blown Alcohol Nostalgia Funny Car. So, let me see what the name on this is. Krista Mozzarella. Yeah, so uh, here is this. <laughs> Wait until you see what I just saw on the back of this. <laughs> okay. So, the back of this card has this little picture here. I know you can see it. <laughs> if you can see what it says right in the middle, I got a good chuckle out of that. <laughs> okay, so... Let's see, there's uh, Amber Franklin. This is one of the cards that I picked up uh, off camera, I believe, during the uh, the uh, roaming around of the pit area and that kind of thing. And her teammate, uh, Tommy Franklin, was also a part of this right here. And then there's the uh, alcohol fuel dragster of John Osterman. Who is uh, also in that per uh, that aspect as well? So there that is. If you look at the if you look at his picture on the back, he kind of looks like Ryu Car, the Mar the Mario Maker YouTuber. That's that's pretty cool. There's also this for the NHRA folks out there. There's also this interesting comparison between Justin Ashley and a, another Mario Maker YouTuber named DGR Dave. I notice that all the time. So uh, I got another Mike Hemp card on autograph. I picked that up at uh, his pit area. Okay, here's a... Oh, never got more of them. Uh, Flying Ryan Harris. This is the KHR team. I kind of found that a bit amusing that it's KHR because it kind of sounds like KHI. So, yeah. <laughs> that was that was kind of adorable. So, there is that. Looks like this guy's been around a while. <laughs> 2016 runner-up finish at first ever race. <laughs> Well, quite a few uh, favorites of mine won their very first national start, so that was that was pretty cool. Uh, here is oh, okay, this is Kyle Harris. He's the one who drove that very short um, vehicle that we saw during the uh, dragster stuff. So here that is. He's the one who uh, asked for my name, so that was pretty cool. Let me uh, let me zoom that out for you. So he's the one who drove that car. I thank you very much for asking to make it personalized. I really appreciate that. Uh, Jacole McNeil, I believe, is the name of this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe this is the other dragster. I think this is the dragster that Larry Dixon faced first. That I couldn't remember the name, and then the announcer person said it, and then it came to my mind about who it is. So, thank you very much for that. Uh, here is Artie Allen. 
I believe that was the other uh, person. This is who took on Scott Palmer. So that means if I'm right, this is the person um, who was warming up his car that I was there and I kind of got overwhelmed by the nitromethane because I never had an experience like that before. So thank you very much for that. Uh, let's see. Here is Melanie Salemi. Uh, this is the person who nearly crashed but saved her car. So uh, here's that person right here. So thank you very much for that and nice save. Hopefully you don't have to have an experience like that ever again. <laughs> Okay, let's see who else was on here. Tisha Wilson, the 2022 Top Dragster Champion in the PDRA. Uh, card's a little bit different. It's um, vertical instead of horizontal, but I do appreciate this. Thank you very much. If you, if you couldn't tell, the signature's right up here. I'll do that so you guys can see the signature. So there is that. And let's see, there's, uh, here's Megan Smith. There we go. I did not know that the Hartman Smith team was still a part of the United Tri, to be honest, so that's pretty cool. And here's another Amber Franklin card, this time uh, autographed by Amber. So thank you very much for that. And the last among the hero cards was the aforementioned Generation X car. The driver's name is Robin Stambog. So here that is. <laughs> Wait until you see the back of this one. This is pretty cute. Yeah, the uh, fonts that they used uh, for a couple of these things was pretty, pretty interesting choices. So thank you, everyone, for your autographs. Now the one I've been saving. So... This is the PDRA sticker that I was uh, talking about, and this is Larry Dixon's autograph. Now, if you remember my story back to the lady who uh, got the stickers for Larry to autograph, here's one of them right here. And <laughs> I still don't know how Larry surprised me out of nowhere. I swear it must have been instant transmission or something like that. Because <laughs> what else could have been? But that's all the autographs and uh, other cards and the t-shirt that I got during this adventure. And um, <laughs> I will say this definitely beats the uh, other racing events of that weekend because NASCAR at Pocono and IndyCar at Iowa did not exactly go well for either one of them. <laughs> Especially the NASCAR portion. So despite the weird ending and stuff, um, everything turned out okay. Dixon got the win in the final race of the event before everything went haywire. And more importantly, Linda's going to be okay, so that's good. <laughs> this is, this was definitely, um, this is definitely one to remember. <laughs> bonus time! Bonus time! So, I mentioned the starstruck aspect quite a few times in this video, so I might as well explain that for those out of the loop. So I may or may not have made a big deal about the fact that Larry Dixon asked me how I was, and I was able to answer, not too bad, just fine. Uh, well, the last time I met one of my racing favorites at a race I went to, the initial meeting did not go as smoothly for me. <laughs> Here's the clip. Yeah, we're not going to bombard. We're, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that to him. <laughs> He's out of way for us. Hey, Johnny. What's up? Alex. <laughs> you remember Mary? Hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Not too. <laughs> hey, can we get a picture together? Absolutely. So, yeah. Larry Dixon asked me how I was, and I answered not too bad, just fine. Johnny Benson literally asked me the exact same question, and for some reason, I get starstruck by him. I tried to respond with not too bad like I usually do answering that question, but I just start gasping for some reason in doing so, which I did not realize I did until I rewatched the footage. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I think time to prepare to meet him contributed to me not being starstruck in that instance when I met Larry. With Larry, it was three trips by his hauler with me seeing him twice before I met him directly. With Johnny, I had a little over a minute between first noticing him and him coming to me to meet me, which admittedly I was not ready for. <laughs> but I'm glad all went well meeting Larry Dixon, and I'm very happy about the fact that me meeting Larry went without an issue for me. <laughs> so mission accomplished.